Hello and welcome to another edition of Paul.com TV. Today we're going to be playing around with Browser Auto Poem. We just did a webcast last week on White Hat World, and there was a lot of people that sent in emails requesting this particular video on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through step by step how to make Browser Auto Poem work. So first thing we got to do is we got to jump into MSF Council, and we're going to be using Framework 3.2 for this particular situation. And as always, anytime we fire up Metasploit, we always hope that we get the cow. In this situation, I did not. So, I'm a little bit superstitious. I hope it's still going to work out. So, now that we're in the Metasploit framework, we're going to use, and we're going to use Auxiliary. Auxiliary Server Browser Autopone. Once we're set up in Browser Autopone, we've got a variety of options that we can set. I'm going to set up some very special ones for me. So, we're going to do set L host. Where do we want it to actually connect to? To 192.168.1.107. This is where systems are going to reconnect back to us after we've exploited them. So we're going to set LHOS to 192.168.1.107. Then we're going to set server, SRV, and we're going to set server port to 80. Then the final one is we're going to set URI path to not evil so as not to arouse any suspicion. So just to kind of recap, let me zoom in here so you guys can see. We're using Auxiliary Server Browser Autopoem. We're setting the L host or the local host whenever we actually exploit the systems and the payloads need to connect back. We're going to have it connect back to us on 192.168.1.107, which is the IP address of this exact system. We're setting the server port to 80, not 90. And then we are setting the URI path to not evil, because we don't arouse any suspicion whatsoever. After we have these options set up, we have to type exploit. Now, with this particular situation, and this particular auxiliary, exploit is a bit different. With a lot of the exploits built into Metasploit, you expect it to go out and compromise a computer system for you. That's not how this works. This is like phishing. We're waiting for the targets to come to us as part of this penetration test. So, as you can see, a bunch of gibberish is basically going across the screen. What does that gibberish mean? Well, if you take a look at it, it's basically setting up a URI on port 80, and it's setting up a random URL associated with this. Now, if you look at the Ruby code for this particular exploit, you can actually set this so it displays the entire path and name of every single browser exploit it's launching. Now, it should be noted these are not just browser exploits. It's also exploiting other applications like QuickTime within the browser itself. So now let's actually trigger this, and let's see what it looks like when it works. So we have it set up and running. And we can see that we're trying to do a search for not evil. Let's not do that. So we're going to surf to 192.168.1.107, not evil. At this point, the system is being, well, exploited. So let's take a look at what that looks like on the other side. So now we have a whole bunch of exploitation going on, as HD likes to say, ponage going on. So we're going to be waiting for session. A new session has created with the remote target system because it's actually trying a large number of different attacks against the system. And sure enough, you can see that we have Meterpreter Session 1 open between us and the target system that we just compromised. Let's take a look at that session. So we're going to do Sessions dash L because we want to list the sessions that we can actually interact with. So we change that L to an I, we hit 1, and we got to prove that we've compromised the system. Even though there's a interpreter prompt, let's do get PID, and you can see that we are set into process ID 564, and then let's also do user ID. And you can see that we are NT authority system. We've just compromised the remote computer system with system level privileges, which actually isn't all too bad. So if we run hash dump, we can dump the hashes, and we can do PS and list the processes and all kinds of wonderful cool things. What does this mean for penetration testers? One of the main problems that we have in computer security today is that too many organizations are too loose with where they allow their users to surf on the internet. They believe that they have antivirus, and they believe if they're actually running something like WebSense or some kind of outbound web filtering software, that everything's going to be okay. This is not the case. So when you're running your penetration test, and you've actually compromised one of your target computer systems, always be sure to remind your, the organization that hired you that they probably need to revisit their policies for people being able to surf the internet. So with that, once again, thank you very much for hanging out with me on this edition of Paul.com TV, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Do take care.